Hey everyone, welcome to the next entry in our video blog series where we showcase some of the features of a universal robot and how it integrates with add-on technologies. My name is Josh Westmoreland. I'm the Robotics Project Manager with Cross Robotics. For today's topic, we want to spend a little time discussing one of the most common applications we see for the universal robot. So in this video, we're going to show you how using a UR can make it quick and easy to deploy a machine tending solution. We're on site at a customer's location in Virginia where we help them with a machine tending application. I want to walk you through what it takes to get a UR up and going step by step. But first, there's a programming concept that I want to explain that's really going to help you implement this at your facility. The universal robot is capable of three different types of moves. The first one's a move J, or a joint move, that's going to move the robot from point A to point B in the most efficient way possible. There's also a move L, or a linear move, which is going to move the robot from point A to point B in a straight line. And then there's a move P, or a process move, which is going to move the robot from point A to point B, but maintain a constant speed and acceleration. This also allows the user to add what's called a circular move. But for machine tending, we really only need to focus on two of those moves, the move J and the move L. The move J is going to be used for our bigger moves where we're going to place to place, and the move L is going to be used for our smaller, finer moves where we need to make sure that the gripper on the end of the robot is perfectly in line with the part that we're going to manipulate. So with that in mind, let's hop on the Teach Pendant and show you what it takes to create a program. We want to show you how to program the robot from a blank slate. But first, please keep in mind that the robot positions you see aren't going to be accurate to our application because this was recorded for demo purposes. But to start with, we're going to select Program Robot and then work with an empty program. At this point, we can go into our Structure tab and insert a Move command that you'll notice defaults and gives us a waypoint. So now by selecting the Command tab, we can highlight Waypoint and hit Set this Waypoint. From here, you'll notice that we've got multiple ways we can actuate the robot through the linear buttons here or actuating each joint individually. Once in position, we hit OK, and you'll see that the icon has turned green, meaning that the waypoint has been set. So from here, we can hit the Add Waypoint After button and again set this waypoint. Now we move the robot into the desired position, and this is where we would be programming our path to get oriented over our part. Now to come in perfectly straight onto the part, we're going to insert another move. And from here, we can go to the command screen and change it to a move L. Now we would just program the rest of our path, setting the waypoints to get us into the proper position. Now that we have our path programmed to get over our part, let's show you how to actuate the gripper. So here we're going to go to structure and insert a set command. Once the set's been inserted, we'll come to our command tab and we can set a digital output to fire. In this case, digital output zero, which is wired into the valve that closes our gripper. So we just set that to high. And then it's also good practice to insert a wait after your set command to allow the gripper to have time to actuate. So we simply hit wait, come back to command, and tell it how long we want it to wait for. In this case, 0.5 seconds will be sufficient. At this point, you would program the path to pick up the part and move into position for loading the chuck. Now that we've got our path programmed to get into position on our chuck, we're going to go into structure and insert a set command. Now most chucks operate on momentary inputs, so therefore we're going to set our digital output 1, which is wired into our chuck, to high just to ensure that the chuck is open. Following this, we're going to insert a wait just to allow time for the chuck to actuate and to open up. Again, 0.5 seconds is generally sufficient. From here, we're going to insert a set and just turn the output back off. Because it's momentary, the on and off doesn't actually close it. Going on does. 
with the waypoint, we'll now move ourselves into position to where the part is located inside the chuck. We can insert another set command, which will be used to close the chuck. Again, digital output one, turning it to high. Because it's momentary, this is now closing the chuck. We'll insert a weight just to give it time to close again, as well as the following set. The set being just turning the output back off so it can be used to open the chuck later. From this point, we're gonna to wanna to add another set command that is gonna be used to open our gripper. So we'll select digital output zero, turn it to low, which is gonna actuate our gripper to open. Let's say you've gotta change your pick location. It could be because you've got multiple parts running in the same machine, or that you have to move your pick location to make room for something else. Either way, the UR interface makes it very, very simple. So let's hop back on the teach pendant and show you what it takes to change that pick location. To change a pick location is very simple. We start by highlighting the waypoint we'd like to change, and under the command tab, we simply hit change this waypoint. From here, we move the robot into the new desired position and hit OK. Now this waypoint has been changed. From there, we simply change the remaining waypoints that are associated with this pick or place location and follow the same process. I.O. interaction is oftentimes critical to an application success, and UR makes it very easy to send and receive signals. In the control cabinet, there are 16 digital inputs, 16 digital outputs, two analog inputs, and two analog outputs. On the tool head of the robot, there are two digital in, two digital out, and an additional two analog inputs. But if that's not enough, you can expand upon what's standard by adding remote I.O. via Modbus TCP. But why is that important? What is digital I.O.? Well, in the program we're currently working with, we've used outputs to actuate the gripper, to open the door, to actuate the chuck and actually grab the part from us. But there are some other ways that it could be helpful for you at your facility. To start, we're gonna wire in this push button to act as a trigger for our program to start. Then when we finish up our program, we're gonna move out of the machine and send an output to let the machine know that we're out of the way and it's safe for it to start its operation. Not all machining applications are created equal. Some will be simple, but for others, it may be required to take an additional step to ensure we get to the proper position. For the example we're working with here, it's critical that the part be inserted to a certain depth within the chuck. So to accomplish this, we're gonna use the force move within the universal robot. Once we've placed the part into the chuck, we're gonna place with a predetermined amount of force to ensure that we've got into the correct position. Once we're there, the chuck will be able to grab the part and we've ensured that it's in the right position for proper machining. So as we mentioned, not all machine tending applications are created equal. In this example, we need to push the part up against the back of the chuck to ensure it's seated properly. So we're gonna select the waypoint where the part's going into the chuck, go into our wizards tab, and insert the force function. From here, we can come to command, and we wanna ensure that our tool feature has been selected. This is gonna make the robot push in the z-axis of the tool we also wanna ensure that we're using a simple type force move for this application because we're pushing directly in line with the Z axis of the tool. For this application, we deemed that 20 Newtons was sufficient, so we'll change this to 20 Newtons. Additionally, we wanna highlight this empty portion of the robot program here because what we're essentially gonna be telling the robot to do is push for a certain amount of time with that 20 Newtons of force. So we insert a weight, and set it to two seconds. Again, what we're telling the robot to do here is to get to waypoint eight and to push with 20 newtons of force for two seconds, and this will ensure that our part is perfectly seated against the back of the chuck.
hopefully now you have a better understanding of what it takes to get a universal robot involved in your machine tending process. If you have any questions or if you want to talk about your application specifically, please visit us at crossrobotics.com where there are multiple ways to get in contact with us. Again, I'm Josh Westmoreland. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. We look forward to hearing from you soon.